If you watched my last video, you would know how I ended up with this new Nikon Z5. I have been a Nikon user for the last 16 years due to the image quality, vast range of lenses, and the reliability. I was stoked when Nikon asked me to unbox, test, and review this camera. Officially one of the first in Australia, right, to get my hands on this Nikon Z5. How exciting is that? So over the last week, I've taken this Nikon to do astrophotography. I do sunrise, sunset, night photography, portraits, and I'm gonna deliver my verdicts, the pros and cons, based on my experience using this Nikon Z5. If you don't know who I am, my name is Gunawan. People call me G because Gunawan is a bit hard to pronounce and might be tongue twisting for some people. I started as a wedding photographer in 2005 using my Nikon F75 and Nikon D70S. So let's start with the pros. Nikon being Nikon, it's got a really good ergonomics. You know, all the buttons are easily accessible just by using your right hands only. And the size is very similar with Z6 and Z7. It's very, very similar. The only difference for Nikon Z5 is the dials. Instead of on the left-hand side, like Nikon Z6 and Z7, this is actually on the right-hand side where the LCD screen is for the Z6 and Z7. The video capability for Nikon cameras have gone really far. So the focus tracking, I'm using all the focus right now, it's actually worked really great. You know, all the Z series and it's tracking my face silently. I'm using F4 at the moment, so you can see a bit of a blurry in the background, eh? So that's gotta be the winner too. And another thing as well, it's got focus picking. You know, not every single camera in the market these days got focus picking for photos and videos. It helps when you do manual focusing. It's just another feature for this camera. It's just another pro for this camera. The other pros is like it's got five axis in-body stabilization. So don't get confused with digital stabilization, guys. Digital stabilization relies on the software in the camera to stabilize the image which then relies on sufficient amount of light to hit the sensor. While in-body stabilization will work regardless of the lighting situation. All right guys, I'm shooting with lens 24 to 72.8 now, the S lens. We're gonna test two things right now. So we're gonna test the autofocus, which is the focus tracking, and also the um, IVs. So I actually turn off the IVs at the moment, so there's no stabilization and you can see my hands a bit shaky as i'm talking to the camera you know pointing at the joker there and i'm shooting at 70 millimeter at the moment so now i'm just gonna move this captain america as you can see that the focusing actually looks pretty good uh, you know it's pretty on point pretty silent this is a single focusing and the focus point is just right in the middle and you can see as i'm moving the camera it actually focuses really well and now let's turn the stabilization on. Okay, now the image stabilization is now on. As you can see, I'm, I'm still talking to the camera, you know, pointing at the Joker, and you can see how smooth it is. Woohoo, look at that. You know, I'm pointing at the Iron Man, pointing back to the Captain America, and pointing back to the Joker. So, and Optimus Prime. See, the focus tracking has also worked really well in my opinion. And I do find the high ISO capabilities of this camera actually pretty surprising. Considering the sensor is not BSI CMOS sensor, I went out to do astrophotography and the ISO was 4000 and I got no problem with that. The other thing as well though that's going to help astrophotographers who love to do time lapse this camera using the ENEL 15C battery this is a new battery from Nikon the difference between this battery to the previous version the A and the B is this battery draws power more efficiently 
and therefore you know you get more shots with one single charge and this battery allows the camera to be charged using the power bank via the USB-C input of this camera so you can actually shoot on the go you don't need to rely on a power point really good for traveling I must say the size of this Nikon Z5 has to be the winner too. Z5 is similar to Z6 and Z7 as far as the body size, but when you pair it with this kit lens 24 to 50 mm f4 to 6.3, this camera is like really compact, really small, about palm size. There's no excuse for you to not to carry this camera wherever you're going for traveling. That's another pro. Alright guys, another pros of this camera, it's got two SD card slots. So it helps a lot when taking photos, you can actually make copies into those two cards. But when you do videos and it hasn't changed, I think it's the same with the majority of the cameras in the market as well. The video only records into one card slot only. Now the other thing that's surprising to me is the sharp lens. You know, this lens, as tiny as it is, and the first impression to me that it was like very small, plasticky, you know, therefore I wasn't expecting a real sharp image just out of it. But after using it for over a week, again, at this price point, as a kit lens, I'm actually impressed with the sharpness it delivers. Enough with the pros, now let's move on to the neutral. The reason I call these neutrals are because whether it's pros or cons, it really depending on your situation. To me, these points kind of sits in the middle, so hence the neutral. The first one's a video, you know, depending on whether or not you need video capability. So this camera records 4K cropped, 30 frames per second, 1080p, 60 frames per second. So, um, for me personally, I need a little bit more kick like the slow-mo as well as the log profile. But for a lot of people, this is actually more than enough. Next point in this neutral space is the low light focusing. A lot of people actually want to know and asking me how is it compared to the Nikon Z6 that's got BSI CMOS compared to this CMOS. So I have to admit this one focuses a little bit slow in low light. In pitch dark, focusing will be as challenging as other cameras anyway. So that's out of the discussion. Now I'm just gonna turn off these three lights right here and uh, we'll see how the low light focusing works, okay? So the light's now a bit dim and this is now ISO 4000 as we speak. Let's see how the focus tracking works. I'm still shooting with 70 millimeter and the focus tracking works still really well you know I think it's slightly is a bit slow but it still work really well now let's put a bit of a challenge here let's turn off this light right here okay to my eyes this is pretty much how it looks like so it's ISO 10,000 now I'm going to bump it up to ISO 25,600 so you guys can see better and let's see how the focus tracking actually works in this lighting environment. So it's pretty slow, you know, it's not really following the focus but if I press the shutter halfway down, it does track it, it uh, you know, it's not really well, hey. How about this? Okay. Alright, I think it's a little too dark there in that area. But when I aim to somewhere with high contrast, you know, like it's got a white surface on it, like this, it still work well. Okay, well, hopefully that gives you an idea. If you've been shooting for a while, you will know most cameras are struggling in low lights anyway. So this is actually not too bad. Yes, it is slower compared to the Z6, but it's not bad at all. One thing I forgot to mention, the wireless and Bluetooth connectivity makes sharing content from this camera a lot easier. I'm not sure whether that's something pro or that's a common thing for you as well that you, you know, you sort of like expect to happen on every single camera. But I thought I'd just mention it for you. Okay, now let's talk about the cons. 
the cons, the things that I don't like about this camera. I think Nikon just priced it a little bit too expensive. I've looked at the price tag of this camera, it's a little bit too close to Nikon Z6. So I think it's only like $200 Australian difference for Nikon Z6. So with that in mind, you know, as a videographer, I'm probably going to go with Nikon Z6 instead of the Z5. However, though, Z5 is a little bit cheaper to run because it runs on SD card instead of a CF Express or XQD card, which are very expensive. I'm probably thinking, though, you know, it, it should be about $300 cheaper um, from what it is now. After one week of using this camera, with all those tests, this is the time for me to deliver the verdict about this camera. If you're in the market for a highly capable photo camera, low to mid price range with video feature, this camera might be for you. But if you're videographer, as I said, go for Nikon Z6 instead. One thing that Nikon Z5 teaches me is simplicity. It's compact, lightweight, and it's still punchy, man. It's still punchy. It's a very capable camera pack in this little shell. So if you're traveling, the size and the features of this camera, and it's gonna make you having no more excuses to not bringing this on your adventure. Trust me, it's so easy, it's so compact. Look at this, you know, just like palm size. This is this small, man, like, Technology has evolved so much. It's a really beautiful day in Sydney today. It's a little bit cloudy, but the sun's definitely up shining. So I'm so grateful. Look at the garden behind me. This is so pretty. And I'm vlogging with Nikon Z5 at the moment. Hold on, let me show you. Let me show you. I want you to look at this mirror. Let me show you. But um, <laughs> now you can see yourself, huh? All right, I gotta go. Gotta go back to the car and drive off. My parking's almost up. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. On the same token though, if you don't like the content, some people don't even like the way I look. So if you dislike me, feel free to hit that dislike button. Like, this is dislike, this is like. Either way, I really appreciate you sticking around this far. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, if you want to add any points that I might have missed during this video, comment down below, we'll have a chat. Right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Ciao. Oh, one more thing. Shout out to Nikon Australia. Thank you so much guys for sending me this Nikon Z5. This is a really cute little capable camera. I really enjoyed using this camera. Actually, it's just so sad, you know, this gotta go back home tomorrow. So I look forward to do more reviews for whatever the Z line series that's coming up. So I really hope that you got like more powerful ones for vloggers and videographers, but yeah. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye.